All right, everyone. Welcome back to uh, episode two of the presidential election series. Um, this episode, we're actually going to be analyzing the the toss up states that we had left for the presidential election last time. So we see a Biden at two twelve year, Trump at two hundred sixteen. Now, personally, I think that. Oh, why did I put Arizona as red? No, that's toss-ups. My bad, my bad. Anyway, um, basically we have these states. Now let's actually look at these states. We have Minnesota here, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. All very close in 2016. New Hampshire, also very close. These Florida is also very close. Arizona and North Carolina are pretty comfortable for Trump. Um, so basically we're going to be trying to look at the key issues that are going to be in these states and how they're going to vote based on that. So let's actually check it out here. All right, so basically where we are at right now is the election of 2016 in the presidency. So here is actually the number. So we actually have Iowa over here. Of course, Trump won it by 10 points. So he's going to win it by 10 points or maybe 8 points again this time. Of course, Wisconsin was a big surprise. Trump won it by uh, 14,000. Now these are the three states that, these are the four states that uh, totally, these are the five states up here that totally flipped. And of course Minnesota was won barely by like one and a half percent. So let's actually check out how this uh, election will actually go based on these. These states will pretty much, these three states will pretty much decide the election. Now I will actually be doing some more analysis on North Carolina and Cuba and Arizona later on and the other swing states, New Hampshire as well. But let's actually look at these states first. So if you look at the margin here, 0.7 victory in Wisconsin, so about 27,000 votes there. Of course, if we look at the black turnout here, they basically didn't want to vote for Hillary in, this, in these types of places. They A lot of people didn't come out or feel motivated. Although she had that uh, idea that she was a woman. Of course, here in Detroit... We had, um, or, yeah, and yeah, also, I forgot to mention that Gary Johnson also played a huge role in these states. If you look at here, 106,000, that's a pretty good performance for a libertarian candidate, so a lot of people probably just flocked to her, and hi and Jill Stein, and him, and Jill Stein as well. So, anyway, we actually have Detroit here. The turnout was down 80,000 from last time, so one of the reasons Trump won this place. So, this time he's actually pulling ahead uh, ten percent with black voters. I mean, it's not surprising because Democrats have been telling blacks these promises for years, and they're just not buying it anymore. They're tired of them. So, um, same here in Milwaukee. Same here in Michigan. Of course, we also do have a lot of blue collar workers here in Macomb County. Um, so this actually flipped from uh, went from blue to red. So a lot of blue collar workers in Michigan. We have a lot of white working class people here up in Wisconsin with uh, the the, um, they have they have a lot of white working class people who and and manufacturing people. They want to know all they they are going to be very happy with with Trump's trade deals, and they kind of don't like all this um, Biden Biden's trade plans because he's voted for NAFTA and I don't know he has a pretty bad record on bringing manufacturing jobs back. So I don't think I I think the chances of him winning the state. I mean Green Bay. Kenosha, these guys all went red. Of course, the black turnout is probably going to be higher for Trump. So I don't know if Biden is going to win the state. I'm going to put it as toss-up for now because the polling is everything showing. But polling isn't always right, as we learned in 2016. But who knows? It could go either way. I'm at this point. I'm going to leave. I'm leading it towards the Republican column. I think it's going to go Republican now. On to Michigan. I think this one is actually going to go. Um, Blue. If you look at the most accurate pollster in 2016, which is Trafalgar Group in 2016, they had him up two points in near the end of the election cycle, and the next day he won it by 0 0.7, so they're the most accurate. And, of course, we do have the Grand Rapids area over here, and the blue-collar people over here and a lot of rural turnout, rural, rural turnout, I think they're all going to be motivated. Of course, Trump has delivered tax cuts for the state, which helped blue-collar workers save money, and if... And the auto workers over here have been given, have been protected their Second Amendment rights, so they're not, they, and they've been given big tax cuts. So I don't think, I don't think that this one is going to vote for Biden either, if he's going to repeal Trump's tax cuts. Of course, he's saying that he's not going to raise uh, anybody less than $400,000, but if you, making less than $400,000 income, but if you do repeal his tax cuts, then of course, you are actually going to raise uh, money on people making less than $400,000. Now, Ohio, I already put in the likely column. I just think this one's going red, pretty much safe. 
Um, as for Philadelphia, I don't know. There's a lot of blue-collar people up here in Erie, I think. I'm not sure. But I know there are a lot of white working class people. Like, this is like the Kentucky type of area. Nice red, red type of area. And we also do have this western area over here that has went from Democrat to Republican over a series of elections from, like, the 80s. The last time the state went red was 1980. Of course, Trump carried it again. Now, it's all going to come down to turnout for Democrats if they want to win up here in Philadelphia. Now, the appeal up to the people in the rest of the state is not as good because they keep saying they're going to ban fracking. Now they're swift flip-flopping on it. So, of course, it's a dumbass idea to ban fracking and all that, so I don't really agree with it. And I think it's many people up here, whoops, I don't think they're actually going to agree with it. I think it's gonna, they're not going to vote. So, as for these states, you see that Trump actually, Scranton is somewhere in these counties. I think it's this one, Lacanawa County. So, Trump actually came very close. This is Joe Biden's, Joe Biden's where he was born. Of course, that has nothing to do, that doesn't mean he's going to win Pennsylvania, because, of course, his home state is not even Pennsylvania, it's Delaware. And um, Trump even outperformed Mitt Romney in that state, actually. That was pretty funny. But anyway... Um, of course, I do expect him to lose the popular vote, but we'll discuss that later. Um, uh, that I'll discuss that later. Anyway, we actually have more counties over here. So if Trump keeps it close, he actually flipped this one, Luzerine County, from blue to red. And look at the margin, 57. Look at the turnouts up over here in these other counties. So um, these energy people, these white working class people, and I think even some black people up here in Philadelphia. A lot of black people live in Philadelphia and all these big cities, Pittsburgh. I think there actually might, some of them might actually uh, flock to the Republicans. Uh, they all used to be Republicans after the Civil War, uh, but they suddenly left because they got promises from Democrats that, of course, were never given to them, and more and more are realizing when Trump came into office that he's actually the guy for them. And that's why, of course, he's polling very well with um, black people. As far as Hispanics, I mean, I don't think they're going to have that much of an effect. Of course, um, this actually did correlate directly with the Senate race over here. If I could just go there one second. Yeah, you can actually see that Pat Toomey, the senator over here, actually won with a similar margin. So, of course, he won Erie. He also won this county. I forgot. This is actually a bellwether county over here, North, North, Northampton. And um, let me actually show that off quickly. One way I can tell you guys how to immediately know who's the winner in a presidential election, I'll show you that guy, that guy's that secret later on, but... Uh, here we actually had 71,000 votes here, so a victory for Trump. Of course, the state went red, so this county is actually a bellwether. Of course, here in Bucks County, um, very close. I believe this does actually have a Republican representative. I believe it like a 3,000 vote difference up here for uh, Donald Trump and this guy. And of course, Gary Johnson also played a factor for those delusioned Republicans, and I believe 75% say that they would vote for Trump. Now, of course, I believe that some people, including myself, would actually not vote for a libertarian if they didn't have a chance and vote for the Republican because they actually had the more chance. So, um, of course, we have Chester County over here. Not going to have that much of an effect on the overall outcome. I mean, it was usually a Republican state, a Republican place, but uh, now it's actually been shifting. But, I mean, the margin, as long as Trump keeps it close, I think he can actually... And, and So, that basically, as long as he runs it up here... And, of course, Republicans are actually out-registering. I don't know if I mentioned this, but they're out-registering Democrats across the board here in Pennsylvania. They are doing well. So I think Pennsylvania is actually going to go red. I, I think, I'd think i say this is actually going to go red. I'm, I'm not going to put it as toss-up for now. Uh, and then, of course, not West Virginia, not Maryland. We do have Virginia. Virginia, I'm just going to put as safe red for now. Uh, no, not safe, likely. I think these these people up here in the D.C. suburbs, I think they might have, they're going to just vote here. Of course, we do have... Well, I don't even know where Charlottesville is, actually, but there are a bunch of Trump supporters there. Of course, you know, they're all idiots, white supremacists, stupid people. I don't know why they can't just shut up and stop being white supremacists. North Carolina? I don't know. I, I, I'll analyze that one later. Um, as for these states, Florida and Arizona. Florida is definitely the most important for Trump. Now, he has been polling with f really well with Hispanics over here. So I'm saying, and of course, Palm Beach... Palm Beach, all these places, Miami, uh, they have a lot of Cubans in the state overall. And he's going to run it up over here in Jacksonville, all these states. Orlando, I think this one he's going to win pretty comfortably. He's going to win this this island over here. So basically, I think this one is actually a, 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 a lean R state. I would say it's a lean R state because of the Hispanics. And of course, he has his base over here of... Um, people who just support him, like, of course, the majority of America is white, so obviously, 
majority of either candidate. So the base of either candidate is obviously going to be white, majority white people. But I think the Hispanic people over here play a big factor. Of course, the white working class in Wisconsin, Michigan, and the blue collar people up here, and of course in Ohio over here as well, and Pennsylvania farmers and all these places, dairy farmers will actually play a pretty big effect and have been. They've been helped pretty well with the trade, the trade manufacturing jobs that Trump has got back with his tough trade policies on other places. So as far as Biden, he's going to repeal all the tariffs as well. So I don't think these states are going to vote for him. Um, as far as New Hampshire, I'll check that one out later. I kind of want to just analyze Arizona for right now. So Arizona is actually very interesting. I'll probably this is, I'll probably try and do two more, two more uh, Nevada and New Hampshire, and I'll probably end off this episode. But um, of course, Arizona, Maricopa County is probably going to determine who wins this state. Of course, Trump won it by, looks like, three points, I think. He won the overall state by 90,000 votes, apparently. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me, 90,000. 90, and actually, 91,000. I'll just be exact so he's happy. And about 4%. So, basically... If he if he keeps if he keeps winning Maricopa County, he doesn't even actually need to win Maricopa County to be actually he does basically it would drive his numbers down if he doesn't. But if he wants to win, of course Maricopa County has been Republican since 1952, so he better win it if he expects to win. Of course, there is Yuma down here, probably Republican. Uh, I think he needs to also run it up in these big red red blocks over here. That will pretty much guarantee him the win here. So this is actually the border that Trump has actually been campaigning on immigration, of course. Biden's stance on immigration is absolutely terrible, just letting everybody in, decriminalizing illegal immigration and everything, just letting everybody settle there would totally destroy the crime rate. Of course, Phoenix was, you know, that controversial, controversial share of Joe Arpaio. Of course, he did actually manage to keep the crime rate very low here, which is why... One of the reasons why this state is so Republican. So, um, actually, there is actually some, some more stuff that we can analyze. So, Nevada, I'm not really sure. I think Republicans have been registering a lot more than Democrats over here. So, I think he needs to run it up here in Las Vegas. If you see, he lost it by, let's do the math here, 82,000 votes, yeah. So he needs to cut that down to about 60,000, 50,000, something like that, 60 to 70,000. And he also needs to flip Reno. Reno is actually a Republican place. He needs to flip this. He lost it by 3,000 last time. Of course, these ruler, rural areas over here and all this, these uh, smaller counties are going to obviously make up the votes from Las Vegas. So as long as he runs, keeps it close, a little closer in Las Vegas, flips Reno, and runs it up a lot more in these um conservative areas, he has pretty much a good shot of winning Nevada, so I'm not sure, I'm willing to, I'm putting it as a lean D for now, I don't, I don't think he's actually going to pull it off, I think it'll be about a three, uh, a 30,000 vote victory for Biden, or 20,000 maybe, as far as New Hampshire, I'm pretty sure this one's going to go red, he only lost about 3,000 last time, he's already solved the opioid epidemic, as far as voter fraud, there might have been voter fraud here from Massachusetts, people riding buses, and he's not going to allow that to happen. So, I mean, this is pretty much a Republican state. I think he needs to get uh, Concord to flip. And he's going to keep Manchester, probably. Of course, these are all very close counties. Um, but he's going get, to get his, get his Republican base out fast. I think there's a lot of opioid epidemic problems that he solved in the, up in the state. So, anyway, that is basically the stance of the election. So, I don't think Biden has a cool... Uh, good good appeal to many of these people up here in, in these three states and Florida is probably going to decide the election anyway that's going to be it for this guy episode guys so thank you all for watching next episode we'll do some more election analysis bye